functions unit, if you guys remember, if I had uh, y equals x squared, and I graph this, then if I said, well, what is y inverse? And then you'd say, but Mr. McLuggan, that's not, that, it, y inverse doesn't have a, um, y inverse is not, doesn't, is not a function. So y is not, in, is not invertible. And the reason why, well, what do you mean? Well, again, remember, guys, to find the inverse of a function, you reflected about the y equals x line. If you were to have a function here, when you reflect this, you obviously get something that does not pass the vertical line test. Would you guys agree by looking at that? Right? So do you guys remember what type of problems what we did to like get around that? We added restrictions. For instance, I said, well, why don't we just do this? y equals x squared, where x is greater than or equal to 0. So what that did is that eliminated the negative version of the graph. And now you guys can see that that passes the horizontal line test. So when I invert it, and now it has an inverse. Right? Do you guys remember we added restrictions? Or actually, in this type of problem, you were given restrictions. Now, you were always given the restriction. x is greater than 0 x is less than or equal to 0. You know, you could also give a restriction from like 0 to 2. Like whatever. As long as the graph, whenever you're finding an inverse of a function, it has to pass the horizontal line test, meaning it has to be 1 to 1. Right? So if you think about the horizontal line test, you immediately probably start thinking of sine, cosine, tangent, and be like, oh, we have a problem then. Because doesn't the sine, cosine, tangent all fail the vertical or horizontal line test miserably? Right? So let's just look at sine for a second. So sine function looks something like this. Okay? The sine function definitely does not pass the horizontal line test. And if you actually try to reflect it about the y equals x line, I did a, my best opportunity over there, you guys can see that it fails the vertical line test miserably. Correct? So we need to add a restriction. Now, where should we restrict the graph? Could we restrict it. We don't want to restrict it between like 0 and pi, because that's not still horizontal, right? We could restrict it between 0 and pi halves. But that's only going to give us like a quarter of the answers. And if I notice, well, if I just continue this to here, to negative pi halves, that basically gives us like half of the unit circle, and this is still invertible, correct? Right? So the important thing that you need you guys to understand, though, is this is giving us a restriction. Here is the y equals the sine of x, but now it's being restricted from negative pi halves to pi halves. Now why, again, do we have to restrict it? Because if we're going to find the inverse of sine, it has to be from this restricted function. Does that make sense? We can't do it from the unrestricted because that is non-invertible. Just like you can't find the inverse of x squared. You can find the inverse of x squared where x is greater than 0. Does that make sense? You have, to, you have to have this defined as the restricted sign, meaning there has to be that restriction in place. Okay? Because if you don't have that restriction, you're not going to you're, you're going to get it's not an inverse function. It's not going to be invertible. All right? So um, that's going to be the most important thing that we